Okay, so hi there everyone. We're going to continue our proof um, for the division algorithm. So, so far, what, ha what have we talked about? We have talked about this, the division algorithm itself. That is, let A to be in the integers, B to be positive integers strictly. Then there exists unique Q and R in, in the integers such that A equals B. B times Q plus R, the dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder, where the remainder is strictly less than the divisor, which is the remainder is greater than or equal to zero. So we have talked about that there are two parts of the proof for the division algorithm. We are done with the existence proof, um, which is here. Okay, so again, just a run through, consider an S, a set S wherein L, all the numbers there are in the form of a, a minus b n n to be integers and a minus b n the form itself is a whole number so again this is the whole number s is a subset of the whole numbers we should show we shall show that s contains a least element by the well ordering principle and we will show that s is a non empty subset of the the whole numbers we have two cases first suppose we first suppose that if a is positive or zero so there we have a equals a minus b times 0 is still in S. So S contains an element. For case 2, suppose a is a negative integer. So since b is a positive integer, we have then minus b a is greater than or equal to minus a. That is, it's in the form of a minus b a, which is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, this a minus b a is an element of S since this is in the form here. In both cases, S contains at least one element that such that um, we can see that S is a non-empty subset, is a non-empty set with the, which is a subset of the whole numbers. Thus, by the well-ordering principle, S contains at least element R. So since R is in S, an integer Q exists such that R is equal to A minus B Q, where R is greater than or equal to zero. So this is not enough. We need to also show that R is less than B to complete the inequality. We have seen here that r is between b or equal to zero so for this we assume first that it is false by contradiction r is greater than or equal to zero which is the complete opposite of this then r minus b is at least zero but we have done the process that we have ended up that a minus b times the quantity of q plus one so this is in the form of a minus b n and it is also greater than or equal to zero so therefore this form is in s saying that r minus b is also in s so since b is is a positive integer so r minus b is strictly less than r so this is a contradiction of our choose of our um option or our um choice of r okay this is a contradiction of our choice of r um and then so we say that r is less than b okay so therefore r is less than b Okay, so therefore from here, we have said or we have showed that um, there exists Q and R such that A equals B Q plus R. Okay, so therefore there exists uh, really a Q and an R. Okay, so where R is strictly less than B and R is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that is our, again, a run through of our existence proof. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to have or show our uniqueness proof. So shall we use last one slide for that, another slide, so number two. So for our uniqueness proof, we're going to prove now, this time, that the existence of R and Q, are their existence is unique for each A and B. Okay, uniqueness proof. Okay, so here we would like to show that Q and R are unique. So let's assume that there are integers. Assume that there are integers. That there are integers. Q. Oops. There are integers Q, Q prime, R, and R prime such that a equals b times q plus r and a is also equal to b times q prime plus r prime so we have shown here that a can be equal to 
to two um, values. That is BQ plus R and BQ prime plus R. That is B and uh, rather Q and R are not unique. Okay, so there are integers here. So we're we are saying that it is not unique. What we're going to do is to say that they are unique. Okay, where um, R is between 0 and B, it can be equal to 0. And R prime is between B and 0, but it can be equal to 0. Okay, so this is for R, this is for R prime. Okay, so we will assume for convenience now. So assume for convenience. For convenience. Sorry. Convenience that um, we will have Q is greater than or equal to Q prime. Okay, for now. Then we say that um, since A is equal to A, so let's start here. Um, we say that A is equal to A and we have two values for A. Let's equate them. Then, um, so A is equal to A. So therefore, BQ plus R is equal to B times Q prime plus R prime. Um, then let's isolate all the Qs and the Rs. So what we have is, how about I'll transfer the the R prime to the other side. So what we have is R minus R prime equals BQ prime minus BQ. Uh, please don't get confused with this. Okay, and then what we're going to do here in this left-hand side, or right-hand side rather, we're going to isolate the Qs, okay? Or the Bs rather. We cannot isolate the Q. This is Q prime. I'm sorry. So what we have is R minus R prime equals B times the quantity of Q prime minus Q. Q prime minus Okay, so then, thus, because um, Q is greater than or equal to Q prime, okay, so therefore we can say that Q minus Q prime is greater than or equal to zero. And if that happens, so if this is Q minus Q prime, actually we can just um, change, interchange the primes, actually. Um, what did we do here? Uh, maybe we can transfer the primes here and here. Okay, so that's just okay. That's just okay because um, we can actually transpose the or transfer the Qs here. How about we do that now? Here, so therefore R prime is resting here. BQ prime is over here. Yeah, that's it. That'll fix it. Okay, so that's the same thing. Basically, the transposition, yeah, you can you can try it yourselves, and we will eventually um, end up in this kind of um, this kind of expression. So we have r prime minus r equals b times quantity of q minus q prime. So we say that q minus q prime is greater than or equal to zero. So if this happens, therefore, r prime minus r, the left hand side, is also greater than or equal to zero. Okay, but again, but but because um, r prime is less than b, we have said it in the in the inequality here. Okay, r prime r is less than b and r prime is less than b. So since r prime is less than b and also and r is also less than b, so therefore r prime minus r is less than b overall because they're they're both less than b so therefore um deduction r prime minus r is also less than b so let's suppose for example let's suppose since we say that q is greater than or equal to q prime let's let's um suppose that q is strictly greater than q prime 
Okay, since we want to know that we want to actually in the end part of this, we will want to show that Q and Q prime are equal because saying that they are unique, meaning there is only one Q in this um, equal equivalent A's. So suppose that Q is strictly greater than Q prime. So that is that is um, Q minus Q prime is greater than or equal to one. Then we say that then uh, b times q minus q prime is greater than or equal to b. Okay, so what what happened here? So since we have a q minus q prime here is is an integer, so therefore b times any integer can be greater than or equal to b. Um, this is only equal if if this is equal to one. Q minus Q prime is equal to 1. So the, generally, it's greater than B. Okay, so that is that is R prime minus R is greater than or equal to B also. But this is a contradiction because we have shown here above that R prime minus R is less than B. But here, we have shown that R prime minus R is greater than or equal to B. So this is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. Contradiction. Okay, because um uh, because we don't need to we don't need to write that because um r prime minus r is less than b. So this is a contradiction. So therefore we can say thus. In our assumption, we're in our assumption here that Q is greater than strictly greater than Q prime, thus Q cannot be strictly greater than Q prime. That is, hence, if it is not strictly greater than Q prime, we can say that Q is equal to Q prime. Okay? And hence, uh, we can say also. R is equal to R prime since Q is equal to Q prime. Um, therefore, okay. Therefore, the integers Q and R are unique. Okay, they're unique because um, given the equal a in our previous in our previous slide, given our equal a that a is equal to b times q plus r and a is equal to b q prime plus r prime, we have shown that q and q prime are equal, r and r prime are equal. So meaning um, the a's are equal. So therefore, there can, there can only be one q and one r. So there is um, no q prime because it's just equal to q. There's no r prime because it's just equal to q. So therefore, we say that q and r are unique integers so therefore you are unique integers and this completes this completes the uniqueness proof this completes the uniqueness proof and since it's it completed the uniqueness proof and also it we have completed our our existence proof um, from the previous video. So therefore, the division algorithm is indeed proven. Okay, so that's the end of our proof in the division algorithm. That's quite a long, long way to go. Okay, so we have started here in the theorem. So this is our division algorithm. Again, you may want to watch and reread this. So again, let A be an integer. Let B be a positive integer. Then there exists unique Q and R in the integers such that A is equal to B times Q plus R, where R is between B and 0, but R can be equal to 0 if, if there's no remainder. And we have proven this in two parts, existence and uniqueness proof. I have I have explained the existence proof before this video so let me just run through the uniqueness proof so we have assumed that there are four integers q q prime r r prime such that a are both equal to b q plus r and b q prime plus r prime where r is between b and zero 
can be equal to zero, and our prime is also the, of the same um, inequality. So we have assumed for convenience that Q is greater than or equal to Q prime, at least Q prime. So um, since A is equal to A, we know that. Then that's trivial. Uh, moving on, we have we have some tweakness here. We have tweaked tweaked here a little bit. So in the end, we have R prime minus R equals B times the quantity of Q minus Q prime. So because we have assumed that for our convenience that Q is at least Q prime. So therefore, um, by transposition, Q minus Q prime is at least zero. So thus, R minus R, R prime minus R is also at least zero. So, but R prime is less than B. We know that. And R is also less than B. Therefore, R prime minus R is less than B overall. Suppose Q, we have supposed that if, or assume that Q is um, strictly greater than Q prime. So that is Q minus Q prime is an integer or a positive integer, a counting number. Then B times Q minus Q prime is at least B because this is a multiple of B. That is R prime minus R is also um, at least B, which is a contradiction because we have said that R prime minus R is strictly less than B, not the opposite. So thus, Q cannot be strictly greater than Q prime. And hence, from our as convenience assumption here that Q is greater than or equal to Q prime, since it cannot be um, greater than or strictly greater than Q prime, it should be equal to Q prime. Also, R is also equal to R prime. Therefore, the integers Q and R are unique. There can only be one Q or Q prime here. There can only be one R or R prime here. And this completes the uniqueness proof and also completes our proof for the division algorithm. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you would like and subscribe. So after this, I will give you some um, examples of the division algorithm in action. So thank you very much and see you soon.